Hi friends, hello and welcome to episode 12 of my show Editorial Compass. Friends, in this program we normally take you through the nub of newspapers, mostly uh, relevant editorials, current affairs and at times even some interesting articles. Uh, just to give you an overview as to how uh, India appears to be uh, from the point of view of the press. So welcome to our show once again. The election tempo, my dear friends, is in full flow. Rahul Gandhi, who happens to be Naren Modi's arch uh, rival, has just announced a minimum income plan, Nyai, that is Nyuntam I Yojda, for the poor voters. But this minimum income plan is uh, fatally flawed. As per uh, many economists, Indira Gandhi's Garibi Hatao swept the polls in 1971. Rahul Gandhi hopes to follow suit with Nyay, promising a minimum income of Rs. 72,000 per year to 5 crore poorest families. Garibi Hatao flopped badly, so will Nyay, unless it is totally recycled. Indian parties have glaringly collaborated on cash grants to the needy schemes in Telangana, Odisha and Jharkhand have been followed up by Modi's PM Kisan Yojana costing Rs. 35,000 crore, crore to the exchequer per year. Achieving that without physical wastage is impossible. But Rahul Gandhi's Nyay will cost almost five times of Modi's plan uh, which will be of Rs. 75,000 which means uh, rupees. Uh, so 3,60,000 crore or say 1.5% of the GDP which is no joke dear friends. Rahul Gandhi's uh, promise of a minimum basic income is fraught with challenges. There is a fundamental problem in the proposition because only the bottom 20% of poor households can be targeted. The average income of the bottom 40% of the population is below rupees 1.44 lakhs. Uh, per annum, a scheme in which half of them will be given income transfers as assumes that people do not change behavior in response to policies. The Lucas critique argues that it is naive to assume that people do not respond to policy changes in a rational way. If we predict behavior based on historical data, the predictions can often go wrong. The Nyaya scheme is likely to suffer from a similar critique. Let's illustrate this to you in, uh, in some ways. One, household income distribution is uh, in 2017, that is uh, the population weighted distribution based on uh, the latest uh, available CMI survey consumer pyramids brings up the following two important points. One is the average income of the bottom 20% of the poor households is approximately Rs. 77,000 per annum. This is the largest group for the cash transfer. These households are to be given an additional Rs. 72,000 so that their income gets to around Rs. 1,44,000 per annum to give them Rs. 12,000 per month which is a basic income guarantee. 2. The average income of the next 30% of the households over and above the 20% that is being targeted is Rs. 1.25 lakhs per annum. So what happens now is after income transfer to the poorest 20%, those 30% uh, with income levels up to Rs. 1.25 lakh per annum will be poorer than those receiving the income transfers. So that's the flaw. For they will now earn Rs. 77,000 plus Rs. 72,000 which makes it to 1,49,000 that is around Rs. 12,000 per month and therefore these households will be better off than households that earn Rs. 1.25 lakhs per annum. Rather this will motivate them not to earn so that their income falls below and they too get, a, get Rs. 72,000 as minimum income guarantee. In fact, Households do not need to even earn less because they do not have to report how much they are earning. After all, how will income be measured given informal agriculture income and uh, uh, daily wage employment uh, among the poor? It is not as if their income is credited to their bank accounts. Income earned from growing crops and livestock is particularly difficult to measure.
If income is based on surveys such as National Sample Survey, the rational response to cash transfer scheme for families below Rs. 72,000 will be for families near that level or somewhat above it to report that their incomes are lower than they actually are. In any case, lines between 6,000 per month and 8,000 per month, especially when incomes are uncertain and seasonal and fluctuating, are too thin uh, to be identified. Even without the above uh, scenario of a larger number of absolute poor, this scheme even raises questions about the physical cost and how the Congress is going to fund it for Rs. 3.65 lakh crore or thereabouts is not a small sum. Horrendous problems and leakages will arise, arise uh, in identifying the poorest 20%. India has no income surveys. People will hide their true income to qualify, so the biggest liars will be the biggest gainers. Income certificates from sarpanches and other officials will breed huge corruption. Many poor people live in remote, non-electric, unbanked areas, almost unreachable by uh, cash transfers. Nyaya will make the bottom 20% richer than the lower uh, middle uh, of uh, 20 to 40% who will rightly howl that this is arbitrary and therefore unfair. How will Rahul finance Nyaya? Hope not by big GST hike that could be almost as inflationary as uh, printing notes uh, besides um, or printing currency. Besides, he has already said indirect taxes, especially on auto fuels, are far too high. He could raise uh, corporate taxes, but that will ruin the existing policy of lowering, lowering the tax rate plus cess and surcharge, which is 34.5% for large companies today and requires to be brought down to 25% to compete with other Asian countries. <coughs> India must uh, be tax competitive to take on China and therefore Nyaya looks like a Hawaii plan. Today's entire income tax collection is barely 2% of the GDP. Doubling this quickly is impossible. History shows that beyond a point, high tax rates uh, produce a black economy, uh, not revenue. Indira Gandhi had raised income tax to 97.75%, but got no tax bonanza out of that. On the contrary, Manmohan Singh and Chidambaram slashed it in the 1990s from 50 to 30 percent, yet improved the income tax and uh, GDP ratio by inducing more tax honesty. Many tax exemptions and exceptions are unwarranted and should be scrapped. They are already being phased out, hence the effective tax rate has gone up from 19 to almost 28 percent for large corporations, yet this reduction of tax breaks uh, has produced only modest revenues. Rahul could uh, slash uh, spending. Doing so on health, education and infrastructure would be disastrous. Such spending needs to rise, not fall. Existing subsidies on food, fertilizer and fuel could be abolished to fund NAI, but political competition make it impossible to end existing subsidies. Rahul has always favored additional subsidies and nothing less. He could borrow more increase the fiscal deficit, but then interest rates will rise, hitting not just businesses but even household borrowers. Higher interest uh, payments will squeeze essential government spending. The trade deficit will widen. The rupee will depreciate, raising prices and hitting dollar inflows. The new target under the physical responsibility and budget management law of reducing the public debt from 70% to GDP of GDP to 60% will become impossible. Some top leftist economists have committed, have commented, sorry, as follows on Nyaya. Pranab Pradhan says, India goes, does, India does not officially collect income data. So identifying the poorest 20% is practically impossible or extremely difficult at least. Getting income certificates from some officials uh, can be highly corrupt process. Amiya Kumar Bakshi uh, says there will be information problems for uh, migrant contract laborers working in brick kilns and sugar plantations. For the poorest living in pipes underneath bridges and very temporary tenements, there will be a problem of uh, identity. Most of them will not have ration cards or Aadhaar cards. Says uh, Jayati Ghosh, 
we simply don't have income data. Last socio-economic caste uh, census survey is from uh, 2011, which is a concern since the data is now outdated. You could need a fresh uh, survey. Says R. Ram Kumar, these uh, minimum income schemes would mean a lot, of, lot for someone living in Jharkhand, but will not have any effect or the same effect for someone in Kerala where the daily wage itself is uh, around rupees 1000. There must be an extensive and detailed survey to understand the household and income characteristics across districts and states before a scheme like this can be launched. It will take at least uh, three to four years to conduct such a survey. Odisha's uh, Kalia full form Krishak Assistance for Livelihood and Income Augmentation is the best cash transfer scheme as of now uh, report many papers. It benefits all uh, rural households such as farm owners, ten tenants, uh, landless laborers. Equitably, it excludes big farmers. Orisha's land records have been updated, so identification errors should be low. Kalia is physically prudent scheme. But a central Kalia will have identification problems, but will be better than Modi scheme. Such benefits only farm, uh, su uh, such uh, uh, which benefits, uh, kindly hear this again. But a central Kalia uh, will have identification problems but will be better than Modi's scheme, which benefits only farm owners, not tenants or the landless. Telangana's Ritu Bandhu benefits large farmers the most with nothing for tenants or laborers. Nyai is easily the biggest but has fatal conceptual and practical flaws. Transfer payments need to be accompanied by a reform program for increasing investment, growth and jobs. Considering how difficult it is for government to reduce expenditure, such as those on salaries or interest payments, the question is what expenditure will be reduced? If so, which ones? Or will subsidies be cut or will borrowing be increased and physical targets crossed? Will tax rates be raised? If tax rates, tax rates are increased, will it be the goods and service tax, the GST rate or will GST be lowered as the Congress has indicated earlier? Will Direct tax rates be increased beyond the present rates. Personal tax slabs at the highest levels are already at 33%. If 18% goes as an average as consumption taxes, that is GST, then salaried middle class house households in this tax bracket are already paying 50% of their income as taxes. So will the tax burden on them be increased? In an economy in which the biggest problem is employment. Poverty reduction by income transfers is only a palliative and not a solution. Transfer payments need to be accompanied by a reform program for increasing investment, growth and jobs, while cash transfer is the least distortionary way of poverty elevation. They are not a long-term sustainable solution for income growth. So friends, that's all I have for today. Think about it. If you like my show, kindly share it. Also press the like icon. Also subscribe to our channel by pressing the red icon. <clears throat> and don't forget to press the bell so that you are notified each time we upload a video. And for now, goodbye and see you soon.